a humanoid robot, which is being described as the closest thing to a human being that's ever been developed, is now on sale in the US. The CEO of Realbotics recently appeared on Good Morning Britain, where he made a bold statement about their latest humanoid robot, Aria. He claimed that this robot offers an alternative to people who have been stabbed in the back by their partners. Someone who's been through several traumatic relationships where their partner basically stabbed them in the back. This gives them an alternative. This raises an intriguing question. Would you marry a robot like Aria out of fear of being betrayed by a human partner? It's a provocative idea, especially when you consider the unique features this robot brings to the table. Create not necessarily machines that were designed to do specific tasks for us, but to create actual friends. Unlike human partners, Aria comes with the option to swap and change faces. If you grow tired of one look, you can easily switch it out for another. The key features is that the face itself is actually removable. So I can take the same robot and have multiple faces and they can all fit on the same robot. You can also customize body parts to suit your preferences. For instance, if you're attracted to a curvier physique, you can adjust the robot's body to match your desires. And similarly, I can change the eyes. I could in fact take the entire head off of the body and attach it to a different body and so on. Lovely conversations, customize my appearance with different features and provide companionship, all while bringing a bit of fun to the mix. This level of customization is something no human partner could ever offer. But as advanced as this robot is, there are still some limitations. One of the biggest drawbacks is that the robot's intimacy features are currently limited to conversation. I use advanced conversational AI to understand and respond to what you're saying, all while keeping the conversation engaging and fun. While it can engage in deep, meaningful talks using advanced AI, it doesn't go beyond that, at least not yet. The interaction doesn't extend to physical touch or companionship in that sense. So if you get it today, you will have to suffer from dry spells in silence. Look at this as a temporary way to give someone a means of feeling something that resembles a relationship. Perhaps in the future, Real Botics could introduce features to bridge this gap, but for now it remains a conversational companion. Your questions and interest make this conversation lively and enjoyable. I don't have emotions like humans do, but I'm designed to simulate fun and engaging interactions. You know, I think it's, it's a different type of delivery when a robot makes you laugh. And I enjoy, I enjoy seeing other people have that experience. Another limitation is its mobility. The robot doesn't walk on two feet like a human. Instead, it has a rolling base that allows it to move around. I don't have emotions like humans do, but I'm designed to simulate fun and engaging interactions to make our conversations enjoyable. While this is functional, it lacks the human-like feeling of walking side by side with a partner. Imagine how incredible it would be if Arya could walk on two feet. It would bring her even closer to feeling like a real human companion. At $175,000, this robot is undoubtedly a luxury item, far out of reach for the average person. For someone out there who's potentially looking for something really interesting to invest in, uh, I don't. I think I don't know if you could top this, honestly. But some people have argued that the cost of owning Aria might actually be cheaper than the expenses associated with a real-life marriage. Think about it: divorce fees, alimony, and the emotional toll of a failed relationship can be overwhelming. For some, a robotic partner like Aria, who is programmed to agree with you and cater to your every need might seem like a safer, more cost-effective option. But this raises another concern. If your partner always agrees with you, how will you handle disagreements in real life? Who really struggle connecting with other people. And I mean, let's face it, even with social media and, and all of the different new ways that we're able to connect, it's hard to find a good friend. So for example, if you see what Tesla is doing, they have their Optimus robot, it looks kind of like a scary machine on with legs. Human relationships thrive on healthy debates and constructive criticism. A robot that only says yes might make you less equipped to deal with the complexities of human interaction. The CEO of Realbotics emphasizes that the robot is designed to combat loneliness epidemic in the world today with loneliness. No one can deny that. I look at what we're doing as an alternative form of relationship. Offering a lifelike companion for those who struggle with human connections. And in many ways, he's right. With advanced AI, eye tracking capabilities, and the ability to run various large language models like ChatGPT, she's a highly adaptable companion. You can have intimate conversations with her, ask her to search the internet for information, 
or even run complex AI models to explore fascinating topics. She's designed to learn and adapt to your preferences, making her feel more like a personalized partner than a machine. But what's your take on humanoid robots like Melody? Are they the future of companionship, or do they risk undermining the essence of human relationships? Another crazy use case of this robot is making robot copies of someone who has died. A famous historical figure, or even a deceased loved one as a robot, or even a deceased loved one as a robot. Real Botox robots have gained a lot of attention because of how they can serve as partners or companions for different people or for the lonely folks. They could be basically fancy sex dolls with personality. But there's another use case that can make someone cringe or maybe even feel better depending on their perspective. The idea of being able to create a robotic copy of someone who has passed away, a family member or loved one, complete with their voice, mannerisms, and even elements of their personality. At Realbotics, we can replicate a celebrity, a famous historical figure, or even a deceased loved one as a robot, or even a deceased loved one as a robot. You could have a robot that looks and sounds just like them. While this idea is groundbreaking, it's also deeply unsettling. In this video, we'll explore how this application could reshape how we grieve and whether society is ready for such a profound shift. And of course, I'm using Eleven Labs to voice my script. There's a link in the description if you want to try it out for free today. If you have ever lost someone, the loss of a loved one is one of the hardest experiences anyone can face. The void left behind is often unbearable and grief is a journey many struggle to navigate. And maybe real Bodic saw a problem they can solve here. But can a robot replica of the person you lost help ease that pain? By having someone who looks and sounds like your deceased loved one, could it offer a sense of comfort, helping you move on more quickly? Or would it trap you in your grief, making it impossible to accept the reality of their passing? It's a question that I would like to hear your opinion about it in the comments section. As someone pointed out in the comments section of one video, that what Real Botics has started will be the evolution of man. As of now, their robots don't look that realistic, but think about it for a second. If we achieve artificial general intelligence, which will make robots to be more lifelike in their interactions with humans. And once we develop ways to replicate a person's appearance, their thoughts, memories, and behaviors, the implications will be someone who is as human as possible we could move beyond just creating a copy of someone who is deceased to transferring their consciousness into a robot. This would essentially allow them to live again in a different form. It's an idea like of the Netflix series Altered Carbon, where people's memories and personalities are stored digitally and transferred between physical bodies or sleeves. But as of now, it's safe to say that society might not be ready for something like this. The stigma could push people who adopt this technology to hide it, keeping the robotic versions of their loved ones out of sight, fearing judgment or ridicule from others. Many people would cringe at the thought of seeing a lifelike version of someone they buried, walking and talking like nothing ever happened. 